What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. This is episode three of Cooking Around the Planet, the show where we cook a recipe from every single country until we've cooked them all. If you're new here, I'm Austin. That's my wife, Jess. And last but not least, the star of the show, Otto. <laughs> Last week we took on the United Arab Emirates and it was awesome. The sweetened vermicelli noodles and the balalette blew our minds and we're putting that recipe on our menu for the future. But let's fast forward to right now. We're headed to Central America, a place where volcanoes call home, a place where rainforests thrive and there's even ancient Mayan ruins. Could you take a guess? You might know from the title <laughs> you might know because we picked it last week, but hey, we're headed to Guatemala. Let's go. All right, so it wasn't hard to find the national dish of Guatemala. Everywhere we looked, this popped up. It's pepillon de pollo. And this is, we've never had it, we've never cooked it, but man, we're excited because it's got all different types of flavors. You make this mixture of tomatoes, different type of chiles, um, pump, pumpkin seeds, just all different types of flavor meshed into one. You add some chicken to that, let that simmer, serve it over some rice. We couldn't be more excited to be here. Come along for the ride. While I get some things started, Jess is gonna hit you with some facts. All right, while Austin gets prepped, we're taking it to the notes so I can share some facts with you about Guatemala. Guatemala is the largest country in Central America. It is 42,000 square miles large, which is slightly larger than the state of Tennessee. There are 22 departments, which are states essentially, that make up the country. And it borders Mexico, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador. On the west coastline, you will find the Pacific Ocean. And then up in a tiny little spot in the northeast is the Caribbean Sea. The capital of Guatemala is Guatemala City. The origin of the name Guatemala comes from a word that translates to the land of many trees. And from the videos that we've watched, I'll say that is the perfect name for this country. Alrighty, the first step to making the pepillon de pollo is pollo. <laughs> we will be um, dropping these into boiling water for about 30 minutes. Uh, no seasoning. We're going to season the water just with some salt, but that's about it. Um, pretty simple. Um, I actually just went ahead and got a uh, small chicken, like a whole small chicken at the store and cut it up. Just so uh, the videos I was seeing, they used whole chicken. So without buying a massive one, we got the small one. And then And guys, if you don't have pink salt, get pink salt. Cause it's pretty. <laughs> Cause it's pretty and it's good for you. <laughs> All right, while the chicken's boiling, the next step is we're going to take our pumpkin seeds that are um, no shell on them, obviously. Take a half a cup. And we're gonna actually roast them. Also, Add to that a cinnamon stick. All right, here we go. We're gonna roast these till they're, it says until they're brown. I, I guess they'll turn a different color. Uh, green. What if it just starts making popcorn? <laughs> well, it did say it'll pop. You don't wanna burn them, obviously. You just wanna roast them. And also another addition to this is adding sesame seeds, raw, but we all, we already had um, roasted sesame seeds, so we'll just add those in afterwards. And there's no oil in this pan, it's just dry in there, so. Just to bring out a nice flavor. It smells good. It smells good. Yeah. Take those off before they burn. I'm gonna leave this pan hot. Mm. 
pumpkin seeds in a bowl with pumpkin something. Fire on it. All right, so now we're just gonna heat up some corn tortillas, which is used in just about everything in Guatemala. You'll see them, a lot of videos we were watching, they make them by hand, they got the press, it's awesome. I wanna get one of those presses so bad. Um, but we're actually gonna use these for the mixture actually. We're gonna, once we heat these up, we're gonna add some water to them, moisten them up a little bit, let them sit aside. And then when we make our mixture, um, we'll add them to it. Interesting. Also, people use day old French bread, stuff like that, but this is what is used most from what I've seen. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, you want to get that nice char on there. All right, now, so we're going to actually just add a little water to these, moisten them up a little bit, and we're just going to set them aside until we need them. While this pan's still hot, I'm gonna throw some tomatoes on here. Put a water on them. Look at them dancing. <laughs> and, might be surprised to see it, we're gonna throw the whole uh, onion on there, white onion. Don't peel it. That's how they do it in Guatemala. They actually, they don't peel anything. Any other fruits they use, I've seen them a recipe for, I think it might have been a drink, or like a pineapple drink, where they actually used the stalk of the pine or the husk of the pineapple. So they utilize every part of the fruit, the vegetable, as much as they can. It adds flavor. And I was also reading, I don't know if this is the reason that they do this, but um, peels have a lot of uh, vitamins in them as well. So, but from what I was seeing, as far as the dish itself, it's gonna add some uh, color to the sauce that we're making as well. So while these char up, we're gonna send it over to Jess with some more Guatemalan facts and maybe even some information about the Mayans, which I'm excited about. Known as the land of eternal spring, Guatemala has a very mild climate. The hottest places only reach 86 degrees and the coldest only have a low of 41. And there are 360 microclimates within Guatemala. The population is about 17 million people with 43% being indigenous. There are 41% of Mayan descent, 1.7% Zinca, and 0.13% Garifina. 56% of the population is non-indigenous, referred to as the mestizo population. And they are a blend of European and indigenous descent. 65% of the population speak Spanish, while the rest speak a variation of 26 different indigenous languages. The history of Guatemala begins with the Maya civilization, dating back from 2000 BC to 1523, which is a span of about 3000 years. This is a civilization that Austin and I could go down a wormhole for days, which we're going to after this video. The Mayan civilization is recognized as one of the most advanced ancient civilizations ever known on this planet. They developed the science of astronomy, mathematics and the concept of zero, the calendar systems, and a very vast hieroglyphic writing system. I just read an article that was super interesting that talked about archaeologists just recently discovering a lost Mayan city that had been taken over by the rainforest using a laser called LIDAR where they go above the rainforest and shoot down these lasers and it will show them a full aerial imagery of the landscape that is under the rainforest. And they found a 650 square mile lost city with over a thousand settlements interconnected by a hundred miles of walking paths and remains of several large platforms and pyramids along with canals and reservoirs used for water collection. So as many Mayan temples and historical sites as there are to be visited in Guatemala, there are so many more that have not even been discovered yet, which is so crazy. They were also known for creating very elaborate ceremonial architecture. From temples to palaces, ball fields and observatories, a lot of these ruins actually still stand today and are very popular tourist destinations. So while we could go on and on about the Mayan civilization because it's just so fascinating, the last thing I'll say is 
almost half of the population in Guatemala is of indigenous descent and a lot of them still to this day practice pre-Hispanic tradition and are still very much preserving their culture. Yeah, we might want to just come back to here. <laughs> All right, we are ripping. <laughs> Check it out. Char City. It opened up the doors. <laughs> I'll just head it out. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's smoky in here, but you know what that means? Flavor. So these are just about done. I'm gonna pop these off. All right, the first uh, process of making the sauce, combining it all, is we're going to process the um, seed mixture. I added the roasted sesame seeds in there. So we'll just throw all this in there. All right, so the cinnamon stick did not uh, get processed. That's okay, we'll just add it to the blender. Some people just add everything to the blender and don't use uh, one of these, and uh, that's probably fine too, but I'm gonna add this in there. How good does that smell? So good. And then we are gonna add all of our To that. That'd be awesome if AI would be super useful and create a scratch and sniff option for this <laughs> video. <laughs> smells amazing. Here we go. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I did see some people cut the stem off, that probably, just in case. All right, we're gonna be using chicken stock for the next part of the sauce, so let's go over here and we're gonna remove our chicken, but we're gonna keep the chicken stock. Just set that right there. Make ourselves a little. All right, before we add the chicken broth, we are gonna add some cilantro, about a cup, and also some achato powder. Um, you can find it anywhere in your uh, seasoning aisle. It says ground annatto, and underneath it, it's a chip. A chip. A chew? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a chote. I think it's from a chote is from the annatto seed. A chote powder is from the annatto seed. That's right. I think. Yes. So, very small amount. Must be potent. Fourth teaspoon. Bingo. The emerald. <laughs> Bingo. Is that what he says? <laughs> no. <laughs> he says bam or something. Uh oh. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna blend that. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so now it's got a pretty thick, pretty good thickness to it. So we're gonna add some chicken stock to give it that more saucy of a consistency. Do about do two cups and see see where we're at. You never want to add too much. How's it looking? Chunky. We're about at four cups of chicken broth. I don't think that's all we're gonna do. All right, so I think I 
overflowed <laughs> what this blender is capable of. So I'm gonna put it in the taller one. Now, I should probably do this over the sink. One, two, three. Hey! All right, one last thing to add to this mixture before we finish blending it are the corn tortillas. It's so interesting. Never seen anything like that. But guarantee it's gonna be good. All right, now that's all blended. We're gonna add it to our final pan. One more thing, two more things actually. Potatoes, I'm actually just gonna do like, actually, screw it. And <clears throat> green beans. Our potatoes like. Oh yeah, there was an article that we were reading that said Guatemala is one of the highest grossing potato growers because of the climate and because of the soil, potatoes are prominently grown, along with a lot of other vegetables. Avocados are a big one. Kind of simmer for about 20, 30 minutes and we should be ready. Guatemala belongs to the Pacific Ring of Fire and is home to 37 volcanoes, with three of them being active. The deepest lake in Central America is found in Guatemala and it's called Lake Atitlan. The lake was formed when a volcano erupted 84,000 years ago and collapsed and created a caldera. It is believed to be 900 feet deep and covers 48 square miles. The political history of Guatemala is quite tumultuous, including several dictatorships and a civil war that lasted 36 years, only ending in 1996. Since then, a democracy has been established and peace treaties have been signed. They are providing provisions and addressing basic social services that had been missing from the country prior. And overall, Guatemala has reached a state of peace and is now excelling in their efforts to increase tourism in the country. While there are so many more political facts, historical facts, and so much more to cover in Guatemala, I thought I'd throw in some fun facts. So first up, supposedly Guatemala is home to the Happy Meal. In the 1970s, a Guatemalan businesswoman and philanthropist, Yolanda Fernandez de Cofino, came up with a meal with small portions for children. She called it the Ronald Menu. And today in Guatemala, it's known as Catilla Feliz. Other famous inventions that Guatemalans have come up with is instant coffee and the online security system called CAPTCHA. You know where it says like, are you a robot? And you have to put in the funky little things invented by a Guatemalan. And the Guatemalan entrepreneur who invented that also invented the world-renowned language learning app called Duolingo. Alrighty, the time has come. The Pepillon de Pollo is done. I would probably recommend first, before you put in the potatoes and green beans, maybe cook them first. I've seen some people put it in the actual, like in the chicken, with the chicken to kind of speed up the process. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to let it simmer for a longer time. Um, but either way, it works. It just depends on um, the speed. So, we are ready to plate. So first, we made some rice earlier. Start with some rice. I think we just cover the whole plate, probably. Yeah. Get in here, find a piece of chicken somewhere down here. Oh. Juice. It smells so good in here. All right. All righty, the time has come. Now yeah, we finished before nine o'clock. <laughs> oh, let's. Top it with some cilantro. cilantro. So we 
Bring them out here. All right. First try at Pipion de Pollo. <laughs> There's so many things going on in there. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to try it. I mean, pumpkin seeds somewhere deep in there. Cinnamon stick. Yeah. Just bouncing with flavor. Mm -hmm. Taste buds are dancing. <laughs> dancing in the night. It's very fresh tasting. I mean, the smell of the kitchen right now is just so fresh. Very fresh. Yes, it's very fresh tasting. <laughs> it's very fresh tasting, and my taste buds are dancing in the night, 100%. Mm. It's so good. I'm trying to process all yeah, of the flavors. That's a lot. Yeah, a few things that were interesting. Obviously, the pumpkin seed, and then the just the green beans added in and the potatoes added in at the end. Mm -hmm. mm. Every bite, it's like a new flavor. Yeah. All right, I want you to try it. Okay. All I want to try some. All right. Very good. There's so many flavors. I feel like every bite you take, you could get a new flavor. Pick up something different. Wow, that's good. I'm gonna get a potato. Where are you at? Come on. Mm. Really good. I don't know. There's, you nailed it. I don't know. <laughs> there's so many things going on, but one word comes to mind, and it's fresh. Yeah. I've never had anything like that. Mm -mm. I know. I'm trying to dissect all the flavors, but it's like I can't even dissect it because it's like nothing I've ever had before. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. But almost, hard, it's hard to describe something with this amount of flavor, different flavors, you it's, know. It's like a mild flavor, but it's still very flavorful. Yes. But it's not like overpowering. Mm -mm, not at all. We thought that there was going to be like heat involved, but no, it's just more of the flavor of everything. The chili's flavor comes through a lot. That's what I'm tasting the most. And it's not a heat thing at all. It's more of a, a flavor. I've never had anything like that before. You always see those in the supermarket and you're like, that looks like it'd be cool to you know, make. You see people make salsa and stuff with it, but you think hot because they look hot, but mm -hmm. they're not at all. They're mm -hmm. just flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'll be using those a lot more. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to devour this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part about making these videos. After we sign off, we just go to town. <laughs> well, Destroy. We did it. Pepian de Pollo. Guatemala. Guatemala, check it off the list. Now we go to the hat. All right, so before we go to the cat, uh, we wanna give a shout out to Toyota World Runners YouTube page. We just stumbled across them in our uh, Guatemalan research and they have like an hour long plus video of them just trucking through Guatemala and it's a really, really cool video. We hope to be able to do something like that one day. If not, we're living through them because man, they hit all the spots, they did it right. Um, captured it beautifully. Captured it beautifully. The videography was phenomenal. The two of them are awesome. 
Um, so yeah, go check them out, Toyota World Runners um, on YouTube. I think they have an Instagram page as well. So thanks guys. Um, so now we go to the Tampa Bay Rays cap. And this is a big one, folks, because <laughs> it is opening day for the Rays. They actually ended up losing today, but oh, there's uh, 300 and 500 more games left to go, so all good. I'll get them next time. I'll get them next time. Alright. Here we go. Otto's excited. Help me, bud. He's Where waiting for that go? treat. Yeah. Alright. Drum roll. <laughs> I picked two. Pick two. Maldives. Ooh, the Maldives. Beautiful. Ooh. Wow. That's exciting. That is exciting. All I think of is like beautiful water, right? The Maldives. All Am I saying I... that right? Maldives? Yeah, I think so. I don't know why I thought of sardines. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that's not what we're going to be eating. I don't think there's any correlation. That's just the first thing that came to my head. Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> well, we might be making sardines. <laughs> the sardines something next week. All right. So. We're gonna get to work, we're gonna find a recipe, we're gonna learn about the Maldives, and we'll see you right back here next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll see ya. <laughs> what you think, bud? Recipe calls for a moringa omelet. Ooh. Moringa. Moringa. We have that growing in our front yard. We have that. Yeah, we do. And we actually grow them. Huh.